in this video, I'll show you how to apply a constraint to a task in Microsoft Project. In Microsoft Project, a constraint is an override that you apply to either the start date or finish date of a task for reasons known only to you that Microsoft Project could never know. There's only one right way to apply a constraint in Microsoft Project, and I'll teach you how to do that in this video. So let's get started. In this project, there are two tasks that need a constraint. The first one is task number 12, the test product 2 task. You can see that this task is currently scheduled to start on April the 29th. However, it can't start on the 29th. It needs to start May the 6th or later because our testers are all committed to work in other projects. So we need to set a constraint to move this task to the correct date. The wrong way to set a constraint is to manually type or select a date in either the start or finish cell for a task. If you do that, Microsoft Project will automatically set a constraint and worse yet, it doesn't ask your permission and it chooses the constraint it wants, not necessarily the constraint you would want. <coughs> Let me show you what happens if I try to do that. I'll go ahead and click in the start cell and I'll choose May the 6th. Notice that Microsoft Project displays a planning wizard. This is Microsoft Project's way of telling us I'm going about this all wrong. Worse still, the default option in this dialog, move the task and remove the link, that's the wrong option. That's not what we want to do. So I'll go ahead and cancel. And let me show you instead the correct way to set a constraint so that you keep control of the process, not Microsoft Project. So to set a constraint, double click the task on which you want to set the constraint. Then click the Advance tab, and on the Advance page, click the Constraint Type Pick List button. Here are the eight possible constraints from which I can choose. The one I want is Start, No, Earlier, Then. Then go to the Constraint Date field and select or enter the date on which you want to set the constraint. In my case, that'll be May the 6th, 2024. In addition to these two steps, I also recommend you click the Notes tab and then enter a note to explain why you set the constraint. Let me show you the recommended shorthand that I like to use for setting a constraint. Notice SNET, that's the acronym or abbreviation for start no earlier than. There's the date, May the 6th, 2024. And then my explanation, no test team members available due to commitments in other projects. When I click the OK button, notice that the Gantt bar moves one week to the right. And then notice all of the light blue cell background formatting for all these tasks. This indicates that by setting the constraint, the schedule of these tasks has been moved. The other task that needs a constraint is number 22, the final milestone project complete. You can see that this task is currently scheduled to finish on June the 24th. That means the project will finish on June the 24th. However, we have a contractual finish date with our project client who needs the project to absolutely be done by June the 28th, by Friday at the end of that week. So let's go ahead and set another constraint. I'll double click the name of the task. I'll go again to the Advanced tab. I'll click the Constraint Type Pick List button. 
And we have a couple options here. Finish no later than or must finish on. Of the two, I would recommend for a target finish date, use finish no later than. And then in the constraint date field, enter the date of the constraint. In my case, this will be 6 28 of 2024. Then I'll go to the Notes tab, and this time I'll actually type it all out. Finish no later than. This will be 6 28 of 2024. And we will say that this is the contractual finish date for the project. When I click the OK button, the constraint is set. That's how to properly set constraints in a Microsoft Project Schedule. Well, now you know how to properly set a constraint in Microsoft Project, and you also know a method that doesn't work right and that you should avoid. I hope you find success with using constraints in your projects, and I hope this video was helpful to you as a new user of Microsoft Project. I hope you'll share this video with your friends and colleagues. I hope you'll also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And if you do have questions or comments to share, please type them in the comment section below. And as always, I'll see you in my next video.